Hey friend, Brandon here. There is a frustrating problem with smartphones now, especially for someone like me. It's a problem with Samsung phones, like this Galaxy S10 here. It's a problem with OnePlus phones, like this OnePlus 7 Pro here. It's a problem with iPhones, which I don't have. And it's even a, a problem with some of the upcoming Pixels, like the Pixel 4. But at least Google's trying to do something about that, but more on that later. So in order for me to explain this problem in a very practical and tangible way, I'm gonna leave this uh, typical frame here and go get some props. So let me grab the camera and let's go. That's... That's not the frame I was thinking about. Um, let's let's just grab this camera instead. We'll grab this one. You're gonna get learned. All right, let's go. It's really dark, so we'll resume this when I'm at the store. So while I was at the store, I was a dumb dumb and put the camera on the cart and it rumbled the whole time. So the sound got all messed up. So I'm using a voiceover for this part. After you watch the rest of this video, you'll understand the irony. <laughs> so when I got to the store, I was looking for two different fans. They needed to be fairly small and have different speed settings. All right, that's what I'm looking for right there. This right here has different velocities, which is gonna be really important for what I'm trying to uh, explain, so let's grab two of them. And then along with that, I needed to find some ribbon that I could put on the fans to flap around in the wind. Unfortunately, I was having a hard time finding it and just kept finding this foofy, frilly ribbon stuff that wasn't good enough. I need something that was like what you put on a balloon. And then I found it. So I found this red ribbon here, it's only a dollar, and then uh, a green one, so this should suffice. And of course, I couldn't pass up on the googly eyes. <laughs> and then finally, I just needed a wooden stick of sorts that I could put ribbon on. I promise, all of this will make sense in just a moment. It's gonna be super, super interesting. Hey, so real quick, some of you have asked how you can support the channel. If you'd like to do that, you can purchase some merch, and if you use Pixel Peeper, you can get 5% off on the merch. Here's one of those shirts on the store. Pretty snazzy, huh? And I also have a Patreon at patreon.com slash thisistechtoday, and I have a certain goal that I'm trying to reach so I can launch a podcast so I can make more content for you and just interact with you in a more informal way. So thanks to everyone who helps support the channel in those ways, and of course, thank you for watching. So we're gonna need both of these fans here. I almost dropped it. Now we need the ribbon. By the way, do you like these new lights? I dig them. What I'm going to do is cut these into tiny little pieces. And so the purpose of cutting these ribbons up and to tie it onto the fan itself is so you can actually see the wind blowing. I'm just gonna gaff tape this onto the fan. It should be a bit faster than tying it on. All right, there's one down. Now I have two. Okay, now here comes the weird part. I'm gonna need some reinforcements. This guy. <laughs> if you've been around long enough, um, you may remember a video with this and why I have it. Yeah. I'm gonna take the sticks here. I'm gonna put one of them through, <laughs> through his head. Oh, um, hmm. Clean out your earwax, bro. So I have these two sticks here. I'm gonna get this green ribbon and then I'm gonna tie some of it to the sticks here. I promise you, this will all make sense. I just attach it to this little wooden piece here. Look at him. There's nothing weird about this. <laughs> and then of course, since I bought him, I had some googly eyes. Let me know what we should uh, name this guy uh, in the comments. <laughs> I'm getting Alan vibes. Alan, maybe? <laughs> all right, all of this is for science. Okay, I'm sure you're still wondering, why did I make all this? Why is this a problem? And why is it a problem on your smartphone? So let's turn on the fans and I'll explain. So Alan here, the head represents you and here are your ears. And then here are two fans that represent speakers or the sound, the air is the sound. Since sound is so hard to see compared to something like a TV, it's oftentimes overlooked. With a TV, you can see a higher resolution or a higher fidelity or definition or dynamic range within an image. With sound, it's a bit more of an intangible experiential thing. And if you didn't know, I'm a professional audio engineer and I've been mixing live events for years. And my most notable gig was for Dustin Kensrue from Thrice. So sound problems really bother me. In many ways, 
phone companies are selling you something that's inferior compared to what you could have. And a lot of times they're just hiding it behind clever marketing and big names like Dolby, which I usually respect. So for me to explain the problems with modern smartphone speakers, you need to wear headphones, both of them, or earbuds. Okay, let me turn on the fans to show you the problem with modern smartphones. And for the other audio engineers out there, remember I'm trying to present this in a very simple and accessible way. So cut me some slack. Okay, if I were to turn on one fan, or one speaker, this is what is described as mono in speakers. Just one speaker source. And this is what it sounds like. Now, if I were to turn on both of these fans, it's as if there are two speakers now, right? When you have two sources of audio or two speakers with differing sources of audio, this can create something called stereo. And then here's what that last song sounds like in stereo. In its basic form, stereo allows you to allocate a specific sound, volume, power, position, place, etc. within a stereo space. Stereo allows you to distinguish where a sound is coming from. So as an audio engineer, I can place it in front of you as it normally would be, or to your left, your right, or somewhere in between. To make this work properly, you wanna have two speakers that are the same, they're matched. They have equal sound, power, frequencies, and things like that. So you have both of these fans at the power of one. It wouldn't make sense to turn one up to the higher setting because now it's uneven. So I don't know if you can see this, but this longer ribbon is hitting him because it's at a higher setting. So it's representing a louder volume. So in a recording studio, you have two of the same speakers. They're matching. And that's where we get to our first problem. The first is that they're not the same quality, power, or frequencies. They're unmatched. They're different. So I mix videos and music with these studio monitors. And if I use the same setup as my phone for my speakers, it would be the equivalent of taking away this speaker and replacing it with this one. It doesn't make sense, it doesn't match. Or it's like having one fan on the low setting and one fan on the high setting. To hear how weird that sounds, here's a clip. It sounds kind of weird, right? The other problem is that the speaker is just facing away from you. So you see how the ribbons, they move when the air is blowing at it and then I turn it away and they stop moving as much. It's just not as powerful. And really, that's how microphones work as well. It sounds good when it's pointed at my mouth, but it starts to sound worse and worse and worse the more that's not facing toward me, right? It just doesn't sound as clear or as full as when it's pointed directly at my mouth. Now, it's definitely true that the ribbons still move even though the fan is not pointing at it. You're still getting some of this ambient wind or air, and that's the same with sound, but it's just not going to be as full or as effective as if the speaker or the fan is pointing directly at it. So what companies tend to do is they still point the fan away from you, but they just get a bigger, more powerful speaker and turn it up. See how it's moving more now? <laughs> Janky. Let's turn it down. Doesn't move as much. Alan is not amused. <laughs> you just end up with a loss of quality when the speaker is pointing away from you. It's really a silly design choice because you could have a much better sounding experience or speaker if it was just pointing at you instead of away from you. But at least it's not as bad as some of the speakers on the older smartphones that we had that were on the back for some reason. That literally made no sense. Why did they do that? And on top of that, with this orientation of the speakers at the bottom, oftentimes the microphone is right next to it, right? So think of how many times you've seen an Instagram story and you heard the, the mic being all muffled at first and then, oh, they realized they covered it up and then, oh, Either way, it's a bad design, right? Now, the other issue is how they've designed each of these speakers to be different. Now, some of you have probably thought about this without realizing it. You're probably thinking, well, Brandon, the top speaker is the tweeter and the bottom one is a woofer. Kind of like this, tweeter and then woofer. And this is actually kind of a really smart idea, but also a really bad idea in, in a way. Let me explain. First, I need to explain what a tweeter and a woofer is though. A tweeter handles the higher frequencies of audio. So that's kind of like the clarity or the 
tinniness of audio. So it's kind of like a cymbal on a drum kit, a screechy noise, like a whistle, or like the S's in speech. No, woofer is kind of like the fullness, the lower frequencies, kind of the oomph to everything. So it's kind of like that punch sound effects that you hear in a movie, or kind of where the voice is, where you have a lot of the body. And because a tweeter and a woofer handle different frequencies, that allows them to produce higher quality audio within their respective frequency range. That means it'll sound clearer and more defined. And there will definitely be a little bit of overlap, but not as much because they're separated. And that allows for a much fuller sound. So this tweeter and woofer design, it makes a lot of sense on a smartphone. It's actually kind of neat, unless you want stereo. You see, it's not the same as having two speakers like this. It's the equivalent of removing one of these and then taking this one, taking the tweeter or the higher frequencies and putting it over here on the right channel. And then the woofer taking it and putting it over here on the left channel. If you were to listen to music, it would sound like this. Or if you were watching a movie, it would sound like this. It's weird, right? And it's actually even weirder than that because the woofer or the bottom firing speaker is facing away from you. So you have two bad things going on. Now, I know many of you will say that this is just innovation and that Dolby and all these companies know what they're doing. I agree, they know what they're doing. They're covering up subpar audio quality with marketing. At the end of the day, this is just science. It's objective science on how audio physics works. It's not innovation, it's compromise. It's not my opinion, it's fact. The reality is that speakers and phones are too small and too few to make much sense in this tweeter woofer combination. It's just a clever marketing line given to you because it can't fit a bigger speaker into the earpiece. And they put a smaller one there, probably because we don't have many bezels, right? And that thinner sounding speaker up there is way different than the fuller sounding speaker at the bottom. The best setup for a smartphone form factor is two of the same speakers of equal power and sound pointing directly at you. Now, that doesn't mean that smartphone speakers sound bad per se. It's just weird and not proper with how audio physics work and how sound systems have been designed. Many of the smartphone speakers actually sound really good, but they also sound really weird if you really pay attention to it. They're uneven, one is louder than the other, and now they don't face towards you. And sorry, you'll probably notice this all the time when you use your smartphone. Unfortunately, the Pixel 4 seems to be joining in on this awful trend, but there's a patent that they filed that may give us some hope. This patent doesn't address the bottom five speaker, which is still a bad design, but it allows for a dynamic EQ or balance of sound or how full it sounds, or what frequencies are there for that speaker and adjust that based upon the orientation of your phone. So theoretically it can change from the tweeter woofer design that makes sense in mono into a stereo pair of speakers that still aren't quite matched, but closer to sounding the same based upon how they tune it or EQ it. As you may have already guessed, I would rather have dual front facing speakers. It's what made the Pixel phones one of the highly desired phones for some people and even made the HTC phones really popular back in the day with boom sound. Do you remember that? That was a big deal. I guess we'll find out if the Pixel 4 can actually pull off something that isn't a gimmick and a compromise, or if we end up with speakers that just sound weird. They'll probably sound good, but weird. Let me know your thoughts and if you learned something in the comments below and in the This Is Tech Today community discord chat server. There's a link down below in the description. And feel free to share this video on other subreddits. I'd really appreciate that. Thank you for watching This Is Tech Today where we talk about the intersection of technology in our everyday lives, in business, and in all things creative. Until next time.